This is Twit. So Crew 9. Crew 9. The rescue mission. Not, not to be confused with K9, the robot dog from Doctor Who. Crew 9. SpaceX is launching uh, two astronauts to the International Space Station this week. Kind of a weird month for them because initially uh, this mission was supposed to launch four astronauts uh, to the International Space Station. Now it's only launching two uh, NASA astronaut Nick Haig and uh, Russian cosmonaut Alexander, I think I'm going to get this right, Gorbanov uh, are launching and then they've, they're going to have, uh, I guess, extra supplies and stuff in the other space because this is now kind of a delivery slash rescue mission for... Um, well, for, it- uh, it's a bring them home mission. Bring them home. Well, we're not, not calling it a rescue mission. We're not going to call it a rescue mission. I guarantee you, you're going to see our launches rescue mission. Headline oh, yeah. From somebody. Uh, oh, not from many, space.com. Many. Um, you know, we might mention the Boeing Starliner astronauts in the headline. I don't know. But yeah. we're probably not going to call it a rescue mission. But this is the mission that will that will launch um, that will launch uh, uh, two people up and bring four people back so that Butch uh, Wilmore and Sonny uh, Williams, who launched on Starliner and then stayed behind as their spacecraft came back to Earth, uh, will be able to come back after eight months. Eight months after their eight-day mission launched, they will come back wow. to Earth. How about um, mission salvage? Yeah, mission? They, well, I guess no, that, I, could, yeah, I, could, mm, I could see that. The, the sad part is that the, the, the two slots that were uh, set aside that are now not going to be flying are uh, rookie astronaut Zena uh, Cardman. She was actually going to command uh, I think the, the the flight originally and uh, and three times space shuttle flyer Stephanie Wilson and um, that's kind of uh, a little disappointment I'm sure very disappointing to her because you know she's a a very veteran senior astronaut and this this could have been the last flight for her maybe they'll replace them you know it, it seems like in the past at least in the Apollo era people got bumped they would get to fly again I hope right. they get that chance in the future but at least this mission's getting off the ground delayed be, uh, a few days because of hurricane uh, helene uh, which uh, delayed it until from the 26th to the 28th uh, now it's going to launch at 1 17 p.m saturday the 28th so you can watch it on space.com and 1 17 uh, p.m east east time? 1 17 p.m eastern time because remember we do have other time zones oh yeah well i know like, you guys don't think so there's other but... time zones than new york city what no yeah That's gmt a, maybe where it was invented 15 17 gmt there we go uh 11 17 in california there for you rod so um i did some math that's good uh, okay yeah, and so. and we have a new space plane to talk about yeah this was, was this one came from space news uh, Space News reported that this uh, company, Seattle-based uh, uh, company Radian uh, Aerospace, uh, has plans to build a new reusable orbital space plane. And from what I was reading on their description, this company, uh, it's they're 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 ambitiously looking at single stage to orbit. Which who is looking at single stage to orbit anymore? It's so exciting. Uh, but they unveiled like their scale prototype. Uh, of of the vehicle, it'll have a 15 meter, uh, I believe, payload bay. That's you know about the size of a school bus or so. And um, and the, this scale one is doing taxi and hop tests, so it's not flying yet. Uh, and uh, it'll be interesting. Cause the the idea for this single stage to orbit vehicle isn't like to take off on the runway and then rocket up. They're going to put it on a two mile long sled is what they say on a runway. when worlds collide. Right. How cool. Right. It's going to finally. It's gonna, Shoot it, slingshot it down, and then it goes up, and then and then it takes off. It's going to be really cool. I hope that it gets off the ground. The world could use more space planes, especially reusable. Space okay, so planes. wait a minute though. So this yeah. is a rocket-powered sled that it takes it up and then falls off the end of the track as the thing continues. Is you know, like uh, I, I actually design? I actually didn't get so far to see how they were going to power the sled itself. Mm. Like I didn't see rockets on the design of it, so maybe they've got some other. Uh, issue that seems like a big technical hurdle that they ha- they're not thinking about right now. That's just the concept design. Hey, Eugen Sanger was thinking of it in the 1930s in Germany before he decided to use it to try and bomb New York from a s- orbital skip bomber. So it's been thought of, but yeah, okay, sorry, yeah. I'm getting carried. Well, they away they, unve- here. they unveiled this in Abu Dhabi, so in, in the UAE. Yeah. So clearly, there's like the testing is going on over there uh, for the Seattle company. So very interesting, very interesting. Was there? A- Oh, we we have yeah. Video so this this yeah this video looks like it. yeah it does yeah it, it is rocket rock part of it yeah that is cool. The only thing that that it doesn't have is the track going up like it did in the movies. But yeah. that would be a, a big build. Well, that's a pretty cool looking space plane. I hope I think it'll be nice. And, and this one, 
uh, in terms of like commercial space planes, seems a little bit more down to earth than. Do you remember that Skylon space plane that was like this? Oh, uh, it was, Skylon and, yeah. and Hotal, which looked like a, a whale with a fin on its head. Yeah, that so, was British. So and and, and uh, uh, so we'll, we'll we'll see though. We'll see. You know, we'll. we'll I mean, the, so many planned space planes, and the only one that ever flew successfully for any length of time with people on it was the American shuttle. I mean, Iran yes. flew uncrewed a couple of times to the Soviet Union. I think but, one time, and then it bent the airframe, and then that was it, right? Oh, was it like just they, once? Yeah, you're it right. Launched, it launched into space one time, but I, yeah, they did some, I they think did, they were approach and landing tests before that or something. And it's gone. It's gone forever. Yeah. Gone. Well, and, and it's gone, gone. I mean, one of the fuselages got <laughs> the, the shed crashed on it because they weren't uh, taken care of it. All right. Um, and finally. Yes. Your third story, please. My third story is about Moonlit. the new moon that Earth will get this weekend. And this is very exciting. You might have all heard about this, and I think we've talked about it at least once uh, before on the show. But uh, there is a new uh, second moon of Earth that we're going to get. We don't get it to keep. It's like a, a lender's library of moons, apparently. Uh, but a, a small asteroid is going to get captured by Earth's gravity temporarily on Sunday, September 29th, as we're recording it. It's the asteroid 2024 PTS, uh, which is, is probably how everyone is feeling at the end of this episode. But no, it's this, it's this asteroid, and uh, it's, it's going to be captured in Earth's orbit at uh, 3.54 Eastern time uh, on Sunday, and then it's going to hang around until about Thanksgiving, November 25th. And, and then it escapes our gravity, goes off on its merry way. Hopefully, it doesn't come back and smack us. It's very small. Uh, but it's really exciting. You know, it's, this gives scientists a chance to see a near Earth asteroid up close for a little while. They look at it with telescopes with those radar things that they do when they ping them to see how they look like peanuts because they always look like peanuts. Uh, and, uh, and it's a brand new, it's a brand new asteroid, uh, as its name suggests, 2024 uh, PTS. That's always, it's the year it was discovered. So it was discovered uh, this year. So and, I, I was going to watch the orbital plot on space.com as we are seeing now for those of you watching video, but I think I fell asleep and aged another two years while I was waiting to see what the <laughs> orbit actually became. <laughs> so this is a great big, I assume very weak elliptical orbit that it will be in briefly and then depart, right? Yeah, you know, it's essentially it's, an orbiting flyby kind of thing almost. It, 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 it is. It's, it's, it's what's called an R, I, I think I'm going to pronounce this correctly, Arjuna or Arhuna asteroid. Uh, be, uh, th th that's there's an Arhuna asteroid belt, which is a secondary asteroid belt in our solar system, made up of objects that follow orbits that are very, very similar to Earth, so at about 93 million miles away. So you know we're all kind of like, let's say we're all on the same highway as we're going mm. in a circle around, you know, or an ellipse, pardon me, around the sun. Uh, and every now and then, uh, they, they, by changing lanes, we end up like in the same lane. That's kind of what this seems to be uh, to me. And uh, some of them can get real close, 2.8 million miles or so, uh, you know, going about 2,200 miles an hour. Uh, asteroid 2024, uh, is, it's not going to do a full orbit around Earth, even though it's going to be here for a couple of months. It's just going to be hanging around a bit and then be on its merry way. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.